Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Hey everybody, and welcome to Epic Every Day, our weekday podcast for busy, stressed out Christians who don't want to just survive. I'm Liz Frerichs, and this is my husband, Evan. Hi. And we're so glad you guys are here with us today. It's Tuesday, so we're talking about surrender. Yeah. And this whole week, we're talking about the last few days of Jesus's life and all the well, really just amazing qualities. We're trying to pick out some of the things that talk about the CSCs for that week. And today we're going to be talking about how Jesus surrendered in the garden. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's one of the most famous, famous passages of scripture, and it's really powerful. So I'm reading this out of Luke 22 and starting in verse 41, and this is the NIV. Jesus withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. This is out of Matthew 26, starting in verse 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Stay here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Yeah, I don't know. It's amazing to see Jesus there. I mean, he's not really questioning the plan, like, oh, this plan won't work, or I don't like it. I mean, why doesn't... Maybe he doesn't like it. He says it. he doesn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just the humanity there is amazing to see. He right. just knows how difficult it's going to be. It's not like, oh, God, this isn't really going to work. Like, he's not trying to kind of lawyer or weasel his way out. Right. He's just really just saying, this, this is, is going to be I so hard. I don't know about this. Right, yeah. I mean, it says that his soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Ugh. And then in Luke, it says that he was sweating drops of blood like uh. yeah the anguish there and it's not even nothing's happening yet he's just it's in the middle of the night and he's praying and i'm baffled that i mean i guess i probably wouldn't be able to sleep either if i knew i was going to die the next day but man he's not sleeping at all he's praying all night yeah and his friends are not able to stay with him right yeah i think that's such a realistic picture in a lot of ways like you know surrender yeah that's nice when we have people around us to encourage us and be like yep this is the right thing to do but a lot of the time surrender is in the dark night of the soul you know it happens when we're alone and we're upset and we're trying to figure out what the heck is going on and trying to be like lord did you you know like in isaiah 40 where it talks about you know, where Israel is saying, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Like, just this idea that, did you forget about me? You know? I, but I think that's where the rubber meets the road when it comes to our faith. You know, who are we when it's just us and God? And what's right. our relationship like? If it's depending on other people. And, right. Well, know. and I think if we if we trust God, like if we say, I'll trust you if you do X, Y, Z. Like, that's not real trust. Yeah. That's that's not surrender. Right. That's a like, I want things to go this way, and either it's my way or the highway. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting here. He's wanting his disciples to pray with him, but it also says that he went a little way from them to pray by right. himself, but he was expecting them to, to pray, pray as well. So there's this vulnerability there, but there's also a protecting them, maybe, like maybe to protect the, so they didn't, wouldn't think that he was doubting God or something. I wonder why he went a little hmm. way away to to yeah, say this I particular think it's part. Because, and maybe it's because of my introvertness. But like, if I didn't have individual time with God, I would be a disaster. Yeah, like, well, I can't surrender unless I'm just sitting with him sometimes. 
and that's a habit of Jesus. He'll get up early right. and go off and pray. But this is, I mean, they've already been up all day. They were just together for the whole Passover. I mean, so he wants his fellows there, but he also needs to be alone with God. Right. I think it's key, too, that this happens before the trials, before the crucifixion. I mean, I, I'm sure in the middle of all that, he was still, you know, crying out to God. We see that on the cross. But there was a preparation involved. And I think, you know, for us, we don't necessarily know when something hard is going to happen. Just like, you know, we've shared on the show all of our car ridiculousness and our computer dying and Mm -hmm. just being like, okay. And we were not expecting those things to happen, but we still have to manage them. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to do the work of our faith before the crisis starts. Right. And during, but yeah. before, yeah. too, to just be like, okay, Lord, I'm in a place where, you know, I'm already in a good relationship with you. I already am practicing trusting you with the little things. So when something big comes along, it's still our knee-jerk reaction to go running yeah. to God and be like, okay, I'm going to trust you, even mm-hmm. though this looks hard. And it is hard. I mean, I think, because then what awesome, op, what often happens <laughs> is we haven't necessarily done that groundwork. And then when the trials come and, and the hard times, we try to sort it out ourselves. We use all of our energy and all of our resources. And then we're like, oh, I could pray about this. Right. I need God. And we could save ourselves from so much of that by surrendering before, during, and after. <laughs> Instead yeah. of just kind of during and hopefully after and like out of desperation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like halfway through and then being like, okay. This isn't yeah. working. And I also admire here that Jesus is being honest with God. Like, I want to do this a different way, but your will be done, not mine. I mean, right. we see that prayer echoed throughout scripture, different people of the faith. And it's such an amazing prayer that God right. uh, is okay with that. Yeah. And that surrender isn't like all puppies and rainbows or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Kittens, if you're our daughter, whatever. You know, it. it's... It's hard work, and it doesn't look like, okay, now I'm super excited to do what you want me to do. It's just a, like, I believe that this is the right thing to do. I trust you. I'm going to keep taking one step in front of the other, even though it's painful and hard. There's not a, like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. So how do you think Uh, you do that pre-work? I think think this gets into some of what Peter Cesaro teaches in his... uh, emotionally healthy spirituality class. Um, I think it takes, um, well, like we said, Jesus had this routine where he would go away in the morning and pray and then do his ministry work. And here we see him having an extra long all night prayer vigil. Mm -hmm. So I think having, um, making time to be quiet before God, to slow down, you know, uh, Peter Cesar talks about a daily office where, you know, you're scheduling times of prayer and, and surrender because you really, really a surrender because you're putting aside the hundred things you're supposed to get done today. And you're yeah. going to take 10 minutes or 15, or I think, you know, he talks about how if this catches, you're going to like, maybe you'll be like, oh, I'll take 10 minutes and after lunch and pray. Eventually you're going to, that's going to stretch out and it, you're going right. to want to do it more and more. Mm-hmm. So I think there's an example there of, and that's maintenance. That's not crisis mode. That's maintenance. Right. That's every day. And that's a lifestyle that we want to embrace. Yeah. It was really helpful for me when I started thinking about my relationship with God as a relationship, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like recognizing, you know, the same thing that I would do with a friendship or my relationship with you, my relationship with the kids. You know, that doesn't mean that I can just call you up when I have a problem. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to stay in regular contact and just stay updated. And one of my friends and I, we talk probably once a quarter, and it takes eight hours to catch up on everything. Because it's like, here's all this stuff that we haven't talked about in a while. And we're both pretty busy, which is part of it. But um, And those are, I think, times you cherish, but it's kind of like super concentrated and then mm -hmm. this big kind of desert time (laughs) yes so we don't want to do that with the lord we want to actually spend regular time with him 
before we get in crisis mode. Yeah. Well, I think anybody would benefit from kind of a plan. What's the plan? Are you going to pray when you wake up and at lunch and before bed? Like that would be a great place to start. Right. Um, are you going to do it with your spouse or a friend or by yourself or, you know, meet your pastor or something once a week to, to pray to you, you know, but have some, some kind of a plan. Um, and then try it and let the plan, if it doesn't work, <laughs> change the plan, have, right. have a new plan, but be intentional. Yeah. And be okay with changing things up. I kind of, for a while I was stuck in a, like, I have to either do Bible reading mm. or do a Bible study. Yeah. And now I've kind of gotten, you know, in my routine where it's like, okay, I do Bible study. Then I read through a couple books of the Bible and do my notes that way. And then I do a Bible study and, you know, go back and forth versus being like, okay, I felt like I would do a Bible study and then I would just, I would really miss out on getting straight up scripture. And then I do straight up scripture for a Mm. while and be like, oh man, I'm missing out on the commentary part, you know? So being able to recognize, okay. For me, I like to switch back and forth. Yeah. And for you, you know, see what works for you. Mm-hmm. You know, I think one thing that can help with that consistency is listening to this show every Monday through Friday anyway. We don't have a show on the weekends. But this is where we're talking about the things that remind us of the CSCs and the things that we can kind of meditate on throughout the day. Um, I like to do that. I like to have my Bible reading in the morning, my kind of just devotional read through the Bible time. And then I like to think about it throughout the day. You know, pick a, pick an idea from there and and uh, come back to it over and over again. Uh, and this show can, can help you do that. Uh, we're trying to share ideas that have made such a difference in our life. I mean, these CSCs are just so powerful to us. And that's the reason we're putting it out there. So yeah. I encourage you to uh, make this part of your routine. All right. We love you guys and we're praying for you. As always, pick whether today is going to be awesome because your decision will affect the entire rest of your day. Thanks to everybody that's been sharing the show and listening to the show. We really appreciate it. If you have found this podcast helpful, please do continue to share it. Come back tomorrow and we are going to talk about being centered and how Jesus was centered during that last period of time in his life. Look forward to it. See you then.